Bam. 2019 freestyle setup. Fully approved. Juicy, smooth, all that. Except the motors. The motors are great. Don't get me wrong, but we're going to talk about... I haven't picked my motors yet, but we'll talk about that in a second. Here it is. Apex, Slapex, whatever you want to call it. Let's talk about it. Okay, so before we start the video, I just want to let you know that all the products on my new setup will be in the description. Uh, you can check them out there and help support the channel by using those links. Help yourself get more videos and help me do this full time and pay for some of this crazy stuff that I've been buying and testing. So, oh, also the do-it-yourself uh, Umagrip, the, the raw material sorbethane has been restocked on Amazon. So you can check that out. I've probably built 10 quads with it and I still have this much left. So a few items have changed, uh, like the frame and well, we'll get to that in a second, but let's talk about the things that haven't changed. So the ESC and the flight controller, AK32, Akon, and the 20 by 20 Radix Li in the back. Um, those have been my go-to ever since I was waiting for my 30 by 30s pyro drone hobby wing stack to just run out because I had so many. But yeah, if you're on beta flight or flight one and you don't run 20 by 20 components, you are missing out because really the technology has caught up. It's the same or better than 30 by 30. The filtering is there. Um, the, it's very clean, even on 6S. Like I don't even need, as, as you could see, I put a small 350 farad capacitor where I used to run a thousand because I don't really even need this. I just do it just in case. Um, very clean video, very, I haven't burnt one of these. You know how many 30 by 30 ESCs I've burnt? Hobby Wings, Acons, all of them. I haven't burnt one of these and I've been bashing it around. Like over here I have everything on top of each other, which is not ideal. And this is my basher quad. This is the one that I use in the video where I hit all those gaps on Instagram, if you follow my Instagram. But yeah, the, and the, Oh yeah, and if you follow me on Instagram, speaking of, I had one of my Radix flight controllers, I mean one of my 4S quads caught fire, right? And the only thing that still works is the Radix. It is black with soot and it was actually on fire, the corner of it. The standoffs are, I mean the uh, spacers, the rubber spacers are melted and it still plugs in and works great. Um, so that says something about them. The only downside, I will keep it real, is soldering the motor pads especially like right here i have them on the inside so that i could put my xc60 like this and keep it as short as possible another way to bring down noise so the shorter the xc60 the better and weight also so yeah that's a little hard doing the soldering on those tiny motor pads but if you're even i would say a beginner could even do it if they just take their time so yeah, I have the uh, Radix in the back with the USB sticking out back. I learned that from Kebab. Uh, makes absolutely no difference on flight performance, and it's away from this interference nightmare, this noise nightmare, which is the ESC. Um, I was a little worried putting the Rush Tank VTX on top of it, but because of heat and stuff and maybe a little interference, but I've had no problems with it. Uh, this is my the new way that I'm going to be setting everything up. ESC like this, solo dolo in the middle, FC, ETX in the back. So that's what hasn't changed. The Radix Li and the AK32, great. Let's talk about what has changed. First, the most obvious, the frame. The Apex frame. This frame is, I'd say, the greatest frame that I've ever flown. And I used to say that the reverb would be my favorite frame if it wasn't so damn heavy. Well, this is basically a reverb that is cut weight. It is almost like it's it's like a reverb slash alien. I guess they all have the same squish orientation. So it's very similar to my old frame, the juice press, but it's a little heavier, which means it's a little sturdier. 
and less prone to vibrations, I've noticed. And the motor to motor is a little bit further apart. So let's take a second and talk about that. So the vibration aspect, I think, is because the bottom plate is so thick, whereas this is so thin and perforated. I was getting uh, a lot of micro fractures, and it was causing me vibrations because obviously the flight controller is mounted to it. And, uh, and the motor to motor aspect of it, I used to want the motor to motor to be as close as possible. As you can see, the propellers are almost touching. Um, but now, and that's good on a small, nimble, light quad like this. But I found that with a little bit of extra weight and the motors being a little bit further apart, I think five to 10 millimeters further, it performs a lot better and it's a little bit easier on the PID controller. So I don't, the P's and uh, are a little bit more, it, it's a little less kind of, I don't know how to explain it, but just trust me. It's, uh, it feels a lot better. I feel like the PID controller is doing less work. So we have the Brain 3D mount and this is what I used to go with Brain 3D when I first started, but through the obsession with cutting weight, I ended up printing my own little dinghy mounts like this and this that are great for saving 10 to 15 grams, but they break. And I've lost, I've actually lost a Hero 7 due to this breaking in the woods. And not only that, but this mount has a lot more protection. So I've gotten a few crashes with the Hero 8 and due to this mount, it has survived all of them. Um, it's really well protected and not to mention the ND filter. You just slide it in. So especially now that the Hero 8, you can't, the lens is permanently stuck on there. This really comes in handy for both protecting the lens and also making it easier to swap ND filters. You don't have to take the GoPro out, unscrew it and, you know, screw it back in. You don't mess up the waterproofness. Is that a word? The waterproofness of the GoPro by, you know, opening and closing the lens so many times. Um, yeah, so the, he the Brain 3D mount, great. Now, some things that have changed. The most obvious, I guess, is the my new FPV camera. I love this camera. It's the Foxeer Predator V4 Mini. And if you know me, you know that I was a huge fan of CCD and I really didn't like CMOS. So here I have the Runcam Swift Mini 2. It was my go-to camera, even before Steel started using it. Um, I used both the Johnny Edition and the regular edition, but the regular is hard to get so mostly johnny's i didn't like cmos cameras uh you could say i pretty much hated them i gave the monster a try the foxier monster on this but i really didn't like it with the v4 they have fixed every complaint that i've had so the shimmering is gone um the if you remember the predators they had like this kind of blue tint to them that's gone the colors are true to life and really really nice actually um, so the reason why did I switch? The weight is very similar. Uh, everything's similar except the performance of this is more versatile. And I used to be like, I don't care. I only fly during the day. Well, it does make a difference. So I can't, obviously I can't fly at night with this, but even approaching golden hour, which is my favorite time to fly, this was giving me problems when I was, you know, looking into the sun. I wouldn't, the dynamic range wasn't there. I wouldn't be able to see inside of the trees because I do a lot of like you know gaps and tree work and uh cinematic stuff like that with this it could be golden hour I could be directly facing the sun and I can still see the shadowed areas so I love that I can also see ghost branches that I couldn't see uh with this so you know it has it has a lot of things for me and I think for most people objectively I would say even without personal preference this is probably one of the best uh cameras that you can get right now the Predator V4 Mini um Foxier <laughs> send me some please I would love to put this on every quad um so let's move on from that I think I've said everything I wanted to say so the battery I am running 6s and you might be asking, well, you're running the 2300 kV motors. Well, I use a motor output limiting thing in Betaflight. And I think every, uh, I know that Flight One also has it. Wild Willy did a video about it. Um, I think for this setup, I have it on 70%. 
or something like that, 75%. So basically what it does is it takes these 2300 kV motors and brings them down to a 1750 or to whatever I want. And that's the best thing about it is I can take them down to a 1500 kV. Uh, I can take them up to a 1900 kV and just go balls to the wall crazy. So it basically gives you the versatility to put your motors at whatever KV you want. And you got to be careful, you know, going 1900 and higher on 6S, but you, I can run this off of 4S if I wanted to, 5S, you know? So it lets me do whatever I want. If I want to go cinematic, I'll put a 4S on here and just run it at the native 2300 KV. So that's what I'm doing with that. Uh, the Ovonics or what I'm using and the Thunder Power 1100 and the Ovonic 1000s. I really don't like this battery at all. It's just on there because it looks cool. Um, so yeah, let's move on. The VTX is the Rush Tank Mini, uh, 800 milliwatt, 20 by 20 VTX, stacks very nicely above the flight controller uh, with the DJI antenna the lightest and best in the game. So I've, I've tried all the antennas and this is my favorite. Uh, don't know why exactly, but I do know that it is light, so that helps. We've got the R9MM in there with the Immortal L that I stole from Steel. Um, for a while, if you remember, they were only shipping the R9s with the Immortal T. So I kind of went away from the mounting of the, I like this better. Let's just say that. <laughs> Let's keep it simple. So what else we got? Is that it? No soft mounting because I don't need it. I soft mount pretty much all the time. Like right here, you can see. Uh, I kind of like the way that the soft mounting feels, but on 4.1, it's unnecessary and it doesn't, the feel isn't as noticeable. So I just don't do it. Save weight and save hassle with Loctite and all that stuff. So I'm just uh, using, oh, one important fact. If you get the Apex, make sure you get the aluminum screw set. I think it's called the Mr. Steel Screw Pack. It, I forget how much it is, it's 20 something dollars, but it saves you 21 grams. I don't I don't know the price, so don't, don't quote me on that. But it does save you 21 grams from the regular screw set. I've weighed them side by side and it is 21 grams lighter. I still did use some steel screws. I think maybe these or something. Some of them are steel, but the rest are aluminum, especially on top uh, and any kind of non-structural screw point. Um, see, like I could change these to just those regular aluminum. I'd probably save like four or five grams, but I need to do that. So, that's it that's pretty much my setup the apex 2019 the motors will be changing most likely i love these motors i wish they were a little bit stronger but if they were it would probably take away the thing that i love about them which is how smooth they are and i believe that's due to the air gap being a little bit uh further than usual so the tpu on the front only i might put it on here but i don't think i need it the foam that I'm using is in the description. I just, all these parts are in the description. So go ahead and click down there and check it out. What was I saying before I started plugging myself? Um, yeah, the foam. So the foam, I use these big uh, sheets of foam, both for the Uma grip and for the uh, landing pads that I just cut whatever size I need out of it and I'm good to go save a lot of money and more importantly is you only need to order it once never need to order it again and you'll always have some so if you're making a build or something and you need some foam you just cut a piece instead of waiting for it to ship so that's it uh, all the products are down below again check them out um, I have updated the list to have the newest things that I'm running. Next video is going to be about the motor shootout. So between the silk and everything that I mentioned earlier, I'm not going to go through it again. So like, subscribe, and stay tuned for the motor shootout video. Peace.